You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. This is Mind Pump. Today's episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by people who listen to the show uh, and viewers just like you. But the way we open the episode is with an intro portion. Today's intro portion was 40 minutes long. We talked about current events, talked about scientific studies. We mentioned our sponsors. Hmm. Here's the rundown of today's Mind Pump podcast. We open up by talking about Justin getting leaner. Oh, yeah. He's uh, he's already so hot. If it gets any hotter, <laughs> it's not going to be good. Oh, just wait. There's more. Then we talk about our morning routines and the pump. Uh, what gives us better pumps and how we can get better pumps. Justin's favorite subject. Yeah, I know a lot about it. Uh, that led us to talking about the new coffee canister from Mir. Believe it or not, there was a connection there. Uh, Mir makes some of the best canisters you'll find anywhere for water protein shakes and even coffee the one they have for coffee actually sucks the air out keep it fresh keep for it much fresh. longer and because you listen to mind pump you get 25 percent off any mirror product go check out their stuff it's real nice just go to mirror.com that's m-i-i-r.com forward slash mind pump use the code mind pump for 25 percent off then we talk about getting good sleep and we talk about a product from ned ned is full spectrum hemp oil and they make a blend that's high in cannabinoids. Uh, those are the compounds found in hemp that make you sleep really good. Ladies and gentlemen, this stuff is powerful. Powerful, Sal. <laughs> if you take it before you go to bed, you will sleep like you're dead, but you're not. You actually wake up quite alive. Thankfully. Thankfully. Uh, by the way, uh, Ned is a company we work with, so you do get a huge discount if you use our code. Go check out their products. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get 15% off. Then we talk about Elon Musk becoming the richest man in the world. We talk about Bitcoin continuing to go up in value, even though I sold mine a few weeks ago. <sighs> you totally blew it. And then we talk about social media and perception. A lot of perception craziness going on right now. Then we got into answering the questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know why there's such a discrepancy between trainers on proper form. The next question, this person wants to know all about the pullover, not the sweater, but the exercise. Yeah. So we talk all about the pull over its effects and the muscles it works don't pull one over on me so the next question uh this person wants to know about the benefits of squatting barefoot so should you squat barefoot and if you do what will you gain from it and then the final question this person's interested in becoming a personal trainer wants to know what core disciplines they should establish before they train other people also it's january this is when everybody starts to hey. work out lots of new year's resolutions going on so here's what we did we took our starter bundle and slashed it in half, 50% off. Now, the starter bundle's normally already discounted, so it's an additional 50% off. This bundle is phenomenal for people getting started in fitness. It includes MAPS Anabolic, one of our foundational muscle-building, metabolism-boosting programs, MAPS Prime to teach you how to prime and warm up your workouts to minimize injury and maximize effectiveness, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide, to help you with your diet, but that's not all. We also threw in MAPS Starter for free, which is great because this is a great program that utilizes dumbbells and a physio ball. Great way to get started. If you follow this bundle, you'll get yourself about five to six months of exercise programming all set up and mapped out. Again, it's 50% off, so the programs, if you actually buy them individually, it's over $340. This bundle's 80 bucks. That's yeah, it. Now with a bonus, and Map you, Starter. And you get lifetime access. Uh, and by the way, it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. Go check this out at mapsjanuary.com. That's the word maps, M A P S, January.com. And it's t shirt time. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, you know it's my favorite time of the week. Oh, it is today. Oh, no, yes, it, it is. is. I'm, I'm feeling things. Yeah, keep your hands above the table. <laughs> We've got four winners this week. We have two from Apple Podcasts, two from Facebook. The Apple Podcast winners are mjohnson.dvm and deflector for Facebook, Longboat, Longboat Lifting, and Austin Culver. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mypumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. You should bring that up, actually. We should, that's no, how we should. and I don't want to keep talking about how fat I am. Why not? It's like the fifth episode. Like this oh, week. we have? Yeah, dude. We have? Oh, yeah. No, we haven't. It's not even I have close a better... to, to years. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, like, just as like, like an asshole. Yeah, just as like, piss off, bro. Yeah. You've been teasing me like that uh, for years. <laughs> Take one jab, and he's like, that's it. That's, that's it. it. We're done. We don't need to tell anybody else that I'm fat. No that's more. it. Are we, are we hot, Doug? Yeah, we're hot now. 
Yeah. Oh, we are yeah, hot. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, well, yeah. I want to. I think I'm going to start uh, sabotaging Justin. To be honest with you. Adam. What? Well, well, look I don't at think him. You can. Hey, well, he's since, looking good. Since we're here, I got. I got to admit, I've been. I've been putting uh, four tablespoons of olive oil in your food when you go microwave it. Uh, me? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is that, hey, is that what's happening? And, hey, and, I knew, like, and I knew and he, he would never olive oil. I did, and I knew he would know. He's like, God, this is it's sneaky. This Lots bro- of calories. You don't even know. This broccolini is amazing. I made today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Four, this, yeah. this reminds me of uh, extra my, tasty. Yeah. The way mom used to make it. Yeah, yeah. He won't. He won't notice four extra tablespoons. Oh, man. No, but you know, Justin yeah. is looking amazing. We were, yes, we're, man. Yeah, dude. This is like a weird shift. I was in the. Yeah. I, did I even say this on the? Pod? I'm going to say this now because I'm going to call you out, dude. I'm in the bathroom, uh, <laughs> right? I'm going pee. Yeah. Justin comes in. I hear him come in, and then I hear him. <laughs> this is what I hear him do. He's he's not talking to anybody, right? He just says yeah. this. He goes, you're in the stall right now. Is that what I'm, yeah, I'm going pee, yeah. and he comes in. And he goes. Oh, you're getting lean. And he goes, you're not even trying. And he goes, you're not even trying. You're not even trying. <laughs> but, so I'm like, I'm like I, hey, hey, I knew you were in and there, dude. Oh, I was like, saying it to he's you. He's talking to himself in the mirror. I'm <laughs> talking to myself. I'm not that fucking Bro, weird. In my, in, in, you know, I, I'm, I knew it like you're flexing, dude. You know you're flexing uh, in the yeah. mirror. He's like, no, I'm not. Like, hey, you are, dude. Oh, I was like, I'm like, oh, shit, I'm seeing abs, dude. I yeah. got to flex. Yeah, I yeah. would. Yeah, I mean, That's I'm, just how it goes. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing, bro. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not turning into bodybuilder, so you guys can calm down. Hey, you're just going to look like one. Whatever. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as I can move. I don't want to be all stiff. No. Is that why you're doing all that rotational stuff? Oh, yeah. At the end, I'm you're trying to compensate. Workout? Exactly. Yeah, I think I feel like he fo- he followed the push-pull routine we were doing for about a week. Yeah. yeah. No. And then, yeah. like, all of a sudden, week two, he gets sled. in. Yeah. Sled. Indian clubs. I, I got to throw those spells. in because it's just, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I'm worried, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's like one of those things. I'm like, I don't no, want to walk I, around. I can't scratch my ass. I feel like you're the guy who just, like, refuses to do it the way that we too. do it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, 100% way. that's part of it. Either yeah, that yeah. or Justin's like, I'm growing too fast. Yeah. <laughs> and you just slow it down with some kettle, with, yeah. some, with some Indian I'm looking clubs. too awesome, too quick. Yeah, this no. is not cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be right. the Now, uh, wives, or wives making comments yet? I mean, this is, we've been pretty consistent for a while now. Uh, I would say everybody's getting pretty dialed in. Mm-hmm. Bodies are changing, mm-hmm. no doubt. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are the wives saying? Well, uh, your guys' wives said I look really good. <laughs> yeah, they've complimented yeah, you quite a bit. I got a couple it's, texts. I know that. <laughs> yeah. like, why are you talking to Sal so much? Yeah, no, Je- Jessica just says I look. She's like, man, you, I've never seen you so big. And I'm like, uh, what do you mean by that? Yeah, you yeah. Know? Katrina likes like, the Hulk thick look. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's giving me the like. Could we just keep your legs and ass like this? If I know you're gonna try and because she knows me, right? She's like, I know eventually you're gonna shred down. I know that's yeah. a, like, I know that's coming next. I've been here, right? I've yeah. seen this. I've seen this show before. She's like. Can we just keep your ass and legs the way they are right See, now? See, that's how I'm always at. Like, I like a little bit of softness, you know? Like, yeah. she's always trying to lean out too much. I'm oh, like, for her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. like, yeah. I, I, like know. The, I like the softness. Yeah, no, my dude, uh, was it? Uh, two days ago, I'm downstairs, because what I do is I wake up in the morning, I come downstairs, and then I'll try and make, if I have time, make breakfast for Jessica so she doesn't have to get out of bed because she's feeding the baby or whatever. Anyway, uh, that morning, she asked me to take the baby for a second. I take him down. And then she comes down because uh, a pair of her pants, her stretchy pants or whatever, are in the dryer. So she comes down in her underwear. And now she's feeling, you know, because she just, she had the baby eight, you know, eight weeks ago. She just started working out. Yeah. But she comes down. I'm like, babe, you can't walk around like that in the house because <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah. I'm going to be late for work. She's yeah. like, shut up. I'm like, I'm dead serious You're right like now. Throwing meat to a lion right Don't now. Don't be walking yeah. around that way. You know what what is, so what, what does your morning routine look like, both of you guys right now? Mm. Go ahead, man. <laughs> All right. You're going to copy mine? Is that why you're waiting? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's no, so mine's strange. so boring. That's like, what so do you mean? strange you say that, Sal. It's exactly what routine. I do. Morning <laughs> routine. I get up, I have coffee, and I drive to work. Like that's what. So I are you? Are you, you don't poop before you come to work? Oh yeah, so I do that sometimes. I try to do that because I don't want to do it here. Yeah, you know, like, Adam so always does it here. I know. Well, that's number two. Yeah, it's because right now. I'm what do you mean? Literally. Oh, that's the second one you mean? Yes, because oh, yeah. oh. the goddamn pre workout. Yeah, this yeah. is why I, you know this is caution. Well, okay, actually, to the audience right here. This is why you can't drink pre workouts all the time. Yeah, I'm yeah. drinking a lot right now more it than stimulates usual. Stimulates everything. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It's in I, I I do that first, right? I get my business done when and normally what a normal day would look like. I get to do that and then 
I work all day and then I don't have another one until I get home. But if mm-hmm. I do the pre workout in the morning, you add an extra one. Yeah, you especially deadlifting or squatting. You better <laughs> no. believe squat. You know, oh, yeah. yeah, set four. I'm well, actually, I started. Break. I started to uh, incorporate like protein shakes again. I haven't done that for years. Like I haven't like, and I've, <laughs> I've I've like you know you guys have talked about it with sponsors and all that. I'm just kind of sitting over here, but like I I was like I need more calories and I, especially in the morning and I'll have breakfast. I'll have like second breakfast now. So that's a new thing for me. Like the hobbits. Yeah, like the hobbits. <laughs> Second breakfasts? <laughs> Bro, yeah, you know what I like the most? I love Justin's post workout. Oh, he yeah. has a post workout coffee. Oh, I do. Have you seen that? Are yeah. you really? So we have caffeine pre workout. I'm still deep, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yes. like you thought that just like went away, <laughs> you guys. He's yeah. done with his hard ass workout. I'm trying to relax. He's I know. Like, I'll have another nitro. Yeah. Oh, and I, I made that I'm mistake. Just trying to stay up. I made that mistake the other day, and I didn't sleep because of it, man. I mean, uh, in the morning time now, the the pre workout is enough caffeine that I, that's got to be it for me. Yeah, me too. And I've uh, made the mistake now. Now of, you're going full serving, right? 350 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, yeah. I go two <clears throat> highest. I go is 250. Mm. Like 350 for me is just it's too it's too much. Well, I don't like the face tingly part of it, that, that mm. part. Uh, so sometimes I go back and forth that's between. That's a stroke, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's well, be that. careful there. No, care it's that. like crap that's in there. It's, it's beta alanine. Uh, nah, I don't like that. So you get, you're get you sensitive to it, huh? Very sensitive wow. to it. Wow. Like I like it, a little bit of the I know. Tingling. like People say that, right? But it's not like a little bit of tingly. It like makes my my like I want to peel my skin you off my spiders face. crawling on you. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yikes. And, yeah, it's a weird feeling. Have you ever taken a big dose of niacin? Yes. That's weird yeah, sweating at it all you'll just be sitting there and Dude, then all of a sudden you I, get flush i this is so this is okay, again uh, i was a no kid thanks. i read this article that where niacin increases uh blood flow so, so i think was, i read the same thing on the this article. i think it's the same reason why i bought it yeah too. so it's like it's good for pumps so yeah. i'm like niacin is hella cheap yeah, I go to Wal- is better i'm like i'll go to walgreens and get it so i got some niacin <laughs> i was like six pills i was managing the, the 24 hour in santa Teresa. So I go to the, what is that over there? It's like a, it's not a Walgreens, but it's one of those, right? So I walk in there, buy a bottle of niacin, it's like five bucks. I'm like, Pff, take five of them. 30 minutes at, you know, into my workout. I'm like, holy cow, I feel weird. I looked in the mirror and that was <laughs> drenched. Right? No, red. Oh, oh yeah. Like, <laughs> to- like, like my an whole, apple. Yeah. Yeah, my whole body was red, dude. I thought wow. I was dying. I'm like, what the hell is going that's on? That's why, you know, that's why I could never remember no, when thanks. you guys remember when, uh, cause this was after a speed stack was first for us. Then the next big, like energy drink kick was red line. Yeah. And when Redline came uh, out, VPX. they had uh, niacin in there. Did they? And the reason why I never liked it was I remember I would take it, right? So I'd be at work. I knew I had a break coming up. So I'd like, okay, half hour or so, I got a break. So I'm going to start, I'm going to take this thing. So I'm ready to roll. And I'd be with a client and my pits would just be drenched, sweating. And I wasn't doing anything mm-hmm. different other than just drinking that red line before. And and it took me a long time to figure out it was the niacin that was in there that I wasn't used to taking that. And I had, and the, what connected it was I did the same thing you did. Is I think I read the same, the same article, <laughs> Probably. ran down to GNC or whatever like that, bought a bunch of niacin pills, started taking them and, been, and doing the getting- you know, You know, niacin was one of the first um, cholesterol lowering uh, treatments. Really? Apparently, if you take high doses of niacin and then use a sauna- it lowers cholesterol. That sounds like death. It does, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. But, but uh, that was it one sounds of the first. dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does. Uh, it does sound dangerous. I don't like the feeling. Um, so there was a supplement once t- talking about pumps. I think Kevin Lavrone actually promoted this back in the either early two thousands or late nineties. You rubbed it. You, it was a cream. Oh, yeah. That's still popular. Okay, you it was not the sweet sweat, not that weird shit that makes you sweat. No, 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 no. There's a bicep one that I see guys do. No, it's still going around. So you it's rub called, it. Uh, you rub it on the muscle that you're trying to get a better pump. And I remember, now, minded by this point, I had known some science, so I knew that it was bullshit. Yeah. But I'm like, I'll try it anyway. <laughs> you, <laughs> You, because I mean, you're rubbing it on. What's it going to go straight to the bicep, right? Yeah. No, but it doesn't work that way. So anyway, just for talking you, you rub it on. It's got like cayenne in it or something. So it just makes whatever you rubbed it on the skin hot. So it's, it's all r- spicy. Yeah, like red and swollen <laughs> a little bit. Like that's not the kind of pump I want. <laughs> this is not <laughs> like working. Inflammation. Yeah, yeah. Like it's yeah. irritation. Yeah. It's working. <laughs> no, the only thing I've ever really done that that dramatically increases the pump is uh, more water intake. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. That, nothing compares. You know that uh, that didn't. I didn't piece that all the way together until competing. Oh, it took well, me a long time until too. I had to like track water, and like, I was never that guy like that we we tease right that carries a gallon around. Until then, mm-hmm. 
And it blew my mind mm-hmm. on how much that I could like manipulate the pump with just water. Yeah. So you know what I noticed too? I, I feel like you guys have, have put in enough of this style of training to where like you probably respond more with like a like a greater pump uh, from when you do your workouts because like it's still like work for me to get to that to where it's like poof, now I feel like I'm super pumped and tight. You really? Know? Yeah. Well, you look like you. Yeah. Do. You yeah, look. Like I don't know. I, I, like do you I, know even know what twelve to fifteen reps looks like. I mean, that's yeah. probably part of it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, so, I don't understand why I'm not getting a no, pump. As he's like ripping up 400 pounds this, twice. Yeah. Was, <laughs> just I don't know like, why I'm not getting pumped. Just as like 12, 12 no, reps. Like, he goes, yeah, 12 sets of yeah. one rep, right? Yeah. 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 You yeah. guys start hitting weights. You go, it's just like you inflated like, you know, the two more sizes. No, here's what it is. What it is is that Adam and I have trained the pump more than you that's have. That's what I mean. Like that's that's a skill that you can improve upon. Absolutely. Yeah. Because. Yeah, no, you're, you're I mean, yeah, I can see what, bringing it up. back when we used to work out together it was i remember when we first started training together it was very clear to me how different you and i were the way like we bench pressed yeah um and uh, you know you uh, you look at our two sets justin's about movement efficiency yes whereas you're about feeling it yeah i was always taught about like feeling it more in my chest didn't matter the weight that was on there i could lighten the load more of the chest more of the chest slowing the tip and justin's like move the weight yep yep. and you can see that when we lift next to each other so yeah i've done both right i've trained purely for strength i love it i've also trained for the pump and you do when you train for the pump over time you get a, a better pump i look 20 pounds heavier uh, when I get a pump. I look yeah. like a completely different person because I'm able to, to inflate my muscle. And that itself, that in itself actually has a, uh, some benefit. It has some benefit, yeah. but it's, it's also has some drawback. It like does. it's very discouraging. I can't walk around with a pump all yes, the time. Yes, as a, then it goes away. As a young kid, I remember being so discouraged by that. Like thinking like, and I remember always saying like, I just want to look like the guy in the gym that I am. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just want to be him. Like, why can't I just be him all day? Like, I just want to be that guy all day yeah. long. Like it's, if I could be there temporarily, why can't I be there all day long? because I was so good at getting yeah. the pump. But oh, then I never tra- strength trained, ever. Now, now yeah. uh, back to water. Since we're working out in the morning, are you making sure to drink so much water before we get here, or are you not there doing that yet? Um, so because we're working out early, I'm not as doing that to the point mm-hmm. where I'd like to. And I don't, I mean, I don't, I doubt you guys are paying attention to my body as it gets pumped through our workout. Like, right? Well, we're I paying am, close I, attention. I, I very Ju- much. Yeah, Justin's a little obsessed with me, so he might be. But, I am. You know, so. <laughs> he's, I, he's drawing I, pictures of you. <laughs> <laughs> So about about I mean you'll Portraits. see I mean you've already heard me bark at Justin for locking the the back supplement yeah. because the water's back there. So uh, have you yeah. not noticed like I I refill three of these in in yeah. our workout. Yeah. yeah. So it's by the time I'm done with the workout I'm getting too close to you know about I don't know what's that a half a gallon or so mm-hmm. maybe a little more than a half gallon. Is that the mirror one? Yeah. It is. And yeah. So how much water is in that one? Uh, does it say the ounces on this, Doug? Do you know? Uh, 42 ounces. Okay. I'm so bad. how many ounces in a, in Why a, in do you going to do that to me? Don't do that oh, to me. I don't me. know. Doug, yeah. look it up real quick. Anyway, continue. No, no but I, I fill that up constantly. Like at least as many times as I can during the day. That's the only way I'm measuring it right And now. that one's insulated too, right? Yeah. Do you, so you cold and it stays cold. That's what I love about it. Yeah, yeah. It could sit in my car. My car could be hot. And if I put cold water in there, especially if I drop like an ice cube in there, mm. that shit will be ice cold. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. crazy. So one gallon is 128 crazy. ounces. So that's 40, would you say 42 ounces? Yeah. And I said, drink through these. So yeah. you're drinking, wow, you're drinking a gallon? Yeah. I've, all I've already, in the morning? This is my third one right now and I'm almost empty. Yeah. I got a sip left. Wow. Yeah. So that's I get it. So what I do is yeah. I wake up first thing in the morning. I just have two big glasses of water before I come over and then I drink throughout the mm. workout. But I, I think I'm going to get something like that. It's a strategy that worked well for my clients when I would give them a container that had you know, a measurement on it and I could tell them, mm-hmm. drink three of these or four of these. It really helped them to track. Otherwise, if it's just, measurable that way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I know. It, that does help quite a bit. It was interesting too. They have like a new product out that I saw that was like, it, it basically helps to preserve the freshness of your coffee beans. And oh, is this the one that longer. sucks out the air? Yeah, it sucks out all the air. And, and Who I does? Mirror? Yeah. Cause like I mean, look how how crazy it is. Like you'll leave you'll leave that bottle out in this in the sun all day long with an ice cube, like you said, in it, and it's like it's still super cold. Right. right. So like I'm interested to see if they've mastered the you know keeping that freshness and scent and everything of the coffee too. Well, it makes a big difference with. Coffee. I didn't know that. Don't yeah. Pull it up. What's it called? I didn't even know. Where did you read this? Look at you doing your homework on, hey, on man. our companies. <laughs> wow, I'm so proud of you right now. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee canister. Yeah. Like, it, oh, that makes sense. Can I not see it? Let me see it. <coughs> He's gonna pull it up right now. Really... I'm so glad Justin runs everything because he, he knows it all. Oh, yeah. yeah. How much? How much they sell it for? It is twenty nine ninety five. Now oh, does it go. does it hold a whole? Now let me. Is it? Are you supposed to store? It's like a bag of of coffee. Yeah, twelve ounce bag of coffee. Yeah. So, okay. Now and 
So that way you take the beans out and then you seal it and then it sucks the air out. Yeah, so, so there's like this accordion apparently when you put the lid on and what it does, it displaces the air. It comes out of the canister and keeps the beans fresher oh, for longer. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I thought when it's in the bean form like that, it stays fresh really long. It's when you grind it that you lose it, right? Well, I think anytime you expose the beans to the air... Uh, little by little, they're degrading. Yeah, but there's, so, there's no reason why you can't put ground in there too. Though. Well, that's well, I you know could. That, that's my next question. Is that I if would, it, yeah, because that's what. So what I do right now, right, is I have our our, our bags of key on that I I do. And I grind it up like enough to where it's probably going to get me through the week. So it's a couple of those things full, mm-hmm. and then I just put it in a Ziploc bag in the refrigerator. That's what I do right yeah, now. Yeah, so that's what we right. do. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. yeah, we don't use uh, what we do espresso though, but we but same thing. We have the ground yeah. espresso. Right, right. So that same concept, but now I'll try it. Yeah, with this. yeah, yeah. No, that, that's really interesting. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Now, I know you guys don't drink espresso. Oh, I do now. Actually, I bought Courtney this like pretty uh, fancy machine for for Christmas. I don't so. know how to use those machines. Yeah. That's well. <laughs> no, no, no. Do I you have two, I have two of them. Oh, oh do you? you do? I do. Oh, I Bro, know. it's the well. I don't know the one I got. I got one on Amazon for like. Yeah, 90. I've just been doing shots with it. It's great. Oh, I, it was like ninety bucks. I got and like it a super an fancy one as a gift from uh, my father in law, and then I have an, uh, another like a kind of cheaper one. And neither one of them I know how to work. Really? There's, well, I don't know. <laughs> they the one, look so confusing to me. No, the one I have is super Neither easy. Guy, you literally pl- really? put yeah. it on, turn the knob. And <laughs> makes the the one we have up at the uh, up in Truckee is mm-hmm. easy to use. Have you guys used that? That is one? easy. Yeah. I have not used that either. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. This one's like that, but a little more fancy. Yeah, mm, no, it's, Courtney. it's all good stuff. Doug's shaking his head over there like it's like I'm, he's no, disappointed. He, he has like the rocket fuel. One, oh well, so. yeah. Have you seen his espresso yeah. machine? Yeah, it's which like, is on the blink right now. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, how much did that, you, that one cost? You've been overusing it. You have like a Starbucks one. What does it mean? A couple grand. What does it mean to be on the blink? It means it's not working. That's new term. They used to, to say that back in the. In the That's 20s. old days, you know. That's like a, a <laughs> back, in, back, back in my day. Back the, in window seal back, days. Yeah, back <laughs> with the when the peaky, the peaky blinders. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> back back in the window seal days. I can't. Yeah. But I went home last night and I looked that up. I couldn't believe that I had been. Oh scram, yeah. Scram. Yeah, I know you. You say window seal, and I've heard you say that so many times. But I think I mean, is he just because sometimes you say words a little weird. Like yeah. you say, is he fast saying or whatever. Is he yeah, saying window like, sill just weird? And We're then you like, said it the other day, and I'm like, it's sill. And the look on your face. What? Yeah, yeah, 40 years of my life, no one said that to me. It Wind- makes me so mad when so people So the seal don't... is the ledge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so window seal would be the seal of it, right? I, and maybe that's why I just, I mean, because I know I've probably seen like in like Home Depot window seal stuff, yeah, and yeah. maybe that's why it's ma- I've made that connection and never separated the two. Mm. Yeah. I don't know, mm. but I 100% yeah. have been saying that wrong my whole life. This caulking seal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no. that's a seal. Well, yeah. I, appre- I, I really truly appreciate it when I get called out on it because it's worse if someone doesn't say something like, to me. Oh, like having some in your teeth <laughs> at a party. They just yeah. shake their head, look at you like, oh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, he's a moron. Yeah. yeah, he's a moron. You get home, you yeah. get home and smile like I had spinach in my face the whole time. Yeah, yeah. oh, damn it. Here's, I can't tell you how many times that happened to me. Here's the other thing that I know. Yeah. That, <laughs> you don't need to tell yeah. us, no. bro. Yeah. You get food in places that I don't know how they got there. Hey, I have to. You know what? You have crazy? like a you'll have like a Cheeto stuck. You know to the what's back crazy? Okay, so for the audience, uh, oh, Ma- Mozzie, Mozzie has been coming to work for the last uh, two months consistently every day with me, right? I now have to adjust his diet at home because he gets so much food from underneath Justin. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does I mean, follow me around we, everywhere. We took him to the vet the other day, and he's like, he put on extra pounds. I'm like, well, how's that possible? He's literally eating the same amount. And I thought, oh, then I caught him today, like underneath Justin. I'm like, son of a bitch, he's getting That's extra. That's how I diet, you he's guys. He's getting extra 300 calories yeah. from Justin every <laughs> I just day. just eat faster, and it goes everywhere, and then I get less calories. <laughs> he does every, yeah. Justin has two speeds, sleep or turbo. Yeah, it's just <laughs> hard. That's the thing. I got to do it hard. Here's the other thing that affects uh, the pump a lot for me is sleep. I could do everything right, but if I have bad really? sleep, yeah, if I have bad sleep the night really? before, I don't get a good pump. Hmm. Huh. Does it affect you? You know what? I've actually, and I should be paying attention to this because I had I, the last two workouts have been on bad sleep. I don't think I've ever th- even thought to like evaluate that. Oh, man, it's really a, yes, dude. If I have bad sleep the day after, it affects everything. Of course, strength, performance, but even if I caffeinate myself up and drink and do all stuff and work out. I'm not going to get the same feel. Nothing nothing compares to mm. carbs and water for me. Mm. He, I, I can take all the best NO explodes and the freaking and doing creatine in there and doing pre workout stuff. I can take all these supplements that are out there that promote all that carbs shit. Carbs and water. Carbs and water trumps all. All of them. You know what? Not even close. I was going to ask you because mm. you've been having bad sleep. Uh, why don't you just use the the Ned sleep? 
So I, I do, I, I don't like to do anything. You know me, like I don't ever like to do anything really consistent. And mm-hmm. I just came off of being pretty consistent with using that. There was a while there where Are you I trying would, not to get, uh, like just use it too much? Or yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm with that. Every supplement, every, every, every company we, well, I shouldn't say every, there's certain things like Juve that I use way more consistent stuff, but any, any product that I'm using as, as a band aid to something that I know is not addressing the oh, root that cause. Makes sense. I'm I'm very aware of that, and uh, and I and I and I hope that we always communicate that on this show yeah. uh, that that's how we all are. Like uh, I, I don't care if it sells less of the product or not. I, I don't ever want to be dependent on anything. And even if I love a product, which by the way, the the Ned Sleep is amazing, mm-hmm. and it's so amazing that I can easily go like God. I won't take this every oh, night. It's like an intervention tool for me, yeah. or like if I'm on the road, or yeah, it's like I, I, I'm with you on that. Like I, it can be a, a little bit like addictive because it's like, man, I got such good sleep. Yes. Uh, and so yeah, you do have to kind of uh, check yourself a little bit. Yeah, no, no I, I think that's how. And t- personally, I love always having it on me. I've, I keep so I have one next to my bed. I also keep one in my my bathroom bag for when we're traveling. Mm-hmm. And when I feel like, I, one, I haven't had it in a few days or a week or two, and then in addition to that, I know I need to get to sleep, then I like to use it. And what always happens to me is, like, it, like Justin just said, I was like, I get this amazing sleep, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, so using great. That again. I'm going that again yeah. tomorrow, yeah. right? And then the next day- Duplicate. Then, yeah. Then the next thing I know, I'm taking it every single night, and then I'm aware of that. And when I become aware of that, I always try and kind of- I think any sleep aid uh, is probably best used that way. I think you the, the key is to try to get naturally- good sleep yeah um and avoid things that prevent that from happening right like too much caffeine late at night too much blue light uh you know during the day or but close to bedtime right you know stress that kind of you know cool make sure the room is cool all that stuff and then if you're just getting bad sleep and you need help uh it's sometimes it's a good idea but yeah, yeah i agree with you i think depending on it's probably not anything that you would take yeah that would make you no, sleep 100 percent. did you guys oh, see yeah. uh elon musk is now the richest man he is how, like that's crazy. This just goes to show you how crazy things are. So he's richer than Jeff Bezos. How okay. did Amazon that is way more profitable. Yeah, way more. That's what I'm wondering. Like, where where did that all of a sudden just spike up? Just because of the stock evaluation yes. he got? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so so stock evaluation is included in net worth, of course. Really? really? Yeah, that's how much he's worth. It's what his stock, how much stock he owns. Well, is part like of currently, but then that shifts. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So I it's mean, not how much they have in the bank, right? Oh, yeah. I, that's, so that's my point. Is so he, so we could have a like we've been on this you know bull run for a while, right? We mm-hmm. could all of a sudden yeah you know, crash and mm-hmm. it'd be a bear market for the next six months, and now he's like went from number well, one to number five. Correct. Is SpaceX profitable? Mm, like, I don't think so. No, yeah, because no, 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 I'm no. like, like I, how it, does that work? Is factor in? Well, is Tesla even even tough? Tesla's profitable. It is. Uh, is. It is, but it's not no. It's not like Amazon. Oh, Amazon's it, not only that. Tesla's not even like Honda or Ford or Toyota. Yeah, GM. I think uh, I know GM. You know, it's truck. way more profitable. Yeah, right? so uh, it's weird. It's because so it's it's such high value because so many people want that stock. I mean, the market's just strange. Did you see Bitcoin. What? Oh my god! What is doesn't even make sense. Dude, it's I, almost forty grand. So I have to say that I'm so. I, I don't know if I told I you. I know, dude. Uh, so. I don't know if I share this on the other. So well, I, I think we're a curse. I, I talked about P- Bitcoin a long time ago, right? Yeah. And so um, I looked at it like uh, gambling. I, I like to gamble in sports like that. So I decided, hey, uh, why not take a little bit of a gamble on Bitcoin? So for a couple of months, I'm not going to sports bet. I'm going to put all that money into Bitcoin. It's not a lot of money. It's a little bit of money. And I'm just going to buy it, hold it, and just not think about it. And because I'd not thought about it for so long, and it was down for the last like two years, I can't fucking get back into my Binance and my Coinbase <laughs> account. Oh my Did you God. just forget your password or at what? <laughs> well, so that that's if you don't have your password, it's gone. No, Katrina's got the password, but now they need oh, like good. this photograph identifi- identification thing to transfer the account to a U.S. account. And, oh. oh wow! Yeah, we've been going through it. So, I, so the last like two, three weeks since it's been skyrocketing. I've been trying to get into it to sell it, but every day that I can't, I'm like, shit, it's going yeah, on. So. It's almost a blessing. <laughs> dude. Yeah, I'm so mad. No I, s- wait. I sold mine and I didn't need to, but I'm like, eh, I doubled my money. I might as well take my, you know, my, my profits. <laughs> it's like, so it's now it's double that. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it was like man. three weeks ago. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. Speaking of uh, crazy, now, obviously there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. It's funny. I was, I was on a uh, group thread with my family and everybody's mm. freaking out or whatever. Oh, me too. My brother and I. And both. I, you know, I, I think I thought it was important to, to paint some context. So what I said to my family was, I said, you know, in the 60s and 70s uh, in this country, things were really crazy. You had a draft, right? So people were forced to go fight in a war that nobody liked. You had protests that made the recent ones look like nothing Mm -hmm. going on all the time. 
domestic terrorism, that was the peak in the, in the 60s and 70s, the peak of domestic terrorism. Uh, planes were being hijacked left and right. President got assassinated. His brother, who was in, also in office, got assassinated. You had serial killers that were all over the news. Rampant. Desert. Rampant. Yeah. Uh, you had inflation, double-digit inflation in the 70s. An oil embargo where it, you were, had to wait in line for an hour or longer to get gas and only if your if your license plate ended in an odd number, even even number. In other words, you can only get gas on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Wow. If you had this number and Tuesdays, and Thursdays, you had to wait an hour and a half, and you yeah. had to wait forever. The threat of nuclear war. The big threat, like big threat, like big legit. Threat. This stuff and that, that gas prices, by the way, back then I want to say they were three or four dollars. They were which it, back then. That would be like us having yeah. twelve dollars. Bro, do you know what double so mafia digit, owned New York? Do you know what double digit inflation? I mean, that was that was just that alone was crazy. Is it was it was terrible, right? The difference between then and now is now you are reminded of it con- every minute of every hour. You can't get away from it. Right. Back then, it was like the news at 6 o'clock at night or the newspaper. <clears throat> I don't Otherwise, even, you didn't. I don't even think yeah. that. It's also more sensationalized, too. It's totally. exaggerated. You have to. If it, you're, like think about it this way. If you're a news company <clears throat> trying to capture people's attention, how are you going to keep getting people's attention on the same story? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got to keep it, make it more and more sensational. So right, right now, the big thing that we need to be careful for is our own fear and anxiety and how we spiral things out of control. Because yeah. imagine, okay, let me put it this way. Here's a different way to put it. Imagine if right now a president got assassinated, his brother got assassinated. We had civil rights leaders getting assassinated. Then we had protests that were like they were, you know, months ago, but way, way more, way, way worse. And then all of a sudden, double-digit inflation. Then all of a sudden, there's an oil embargo. Then all of a sudden, we had domestic terrorist bombs going on, whether underground was dropped. Imagine if that happened today, how people re- would react. Oh, um, yeah, I don't it, want to. Yeah, so that, that's yeah. the point. You know, I think yeah. we got to understand the context. I think right now... Everybody is just. It, we're creating more oh, fear and hysteria. Is yes. just creating a lot more problems. For totally, sure. it's, totally. It's, it's, now, do you guys do you guys have any predictions on what? Because right now we're in the thick of it, and not everybody is is savvy or privy to this, right? Mm-hmm. Like some people are, are are definitely suckered into it and bought into it, and you know, staking their claim in a side, and we're hating each other and stuff. Do you think that because of this and it, it, that if it keeps going this direction as it's looking like it is as we start 2021 off to look just as crazy as last year, do you think it'll start to discredit social media? Mm. Do you think that people are going to like because we've talked about this already when we talked about irresistible and all the things that you know are addictive about social media and that people need to start self-regulating. Do you think this is actually going to propel that faster, that more and more people, after we kind of get through all this, are going to start to piece that together, what you just said, Sal? I, I don't know how I don't, I don't know that are, they dude. can yeah, get rid of it because they've mastered like human behavior. And so it's like, we're, we we want it still. Like it, I, There's just too many people dude, that want that constant drama and, and nonsense. Here's the truth, and this is weird, right? So if I were to say to you, do you like to be scared? And, and anxious, you would probably answer no. No, but you're drawn true. to it. That is not true. Yeah, we seek it out. It's a drug. We want to be scared. Well, we a, want on, to be anxious on a chemical level. It's the same thing as being excited, excited for something. Yeah, right? and it's also evolutionarily yeah. when we lived in tribes, you wanted to know the scary news because that's impacting yeah. you here right now. There's a oh, there's a lion. I need to know about this. But when you're on social media and you're hearing about everything all the time, all the time, all the time. Ooh, it just creates this crazy hysteria. Yeah, yeah, but I think what we're what we're not seeing is all the unintended consequences of allowing that and what it's doing to you. And we some people see it like we're talking about the rise mm-hmm. of anxiety and depression yeah. and things like that and suicides like you know, will that just keep ramping up before people do start to kind of wake up and realize, oh shit, maybe I'm self-sabotaging myself by even engaging in any of these conversations or viewing any of this stuff and then start to step away. I hope, but I, here's here's why I think no. Uh, we've been on an uh, obesity epidemic that's been climbing for a few decades now. <laughs> people know, they see it. Is it slowing down? No. People yeah. are still doing the same stuff. Yeah. So because it's a drug, right? So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But I think what's what's what it's doing right now is it's it's causing more extremism on either side, ping ponging back and forth, and it's not going to stop until people yeah. take a chill, like chill out, relax a little bit, um, stop doing the identity politics. Is what happens when you do this is you start to hunker down and identify real strongly with one side. Nothing they do is wrong. Everything the other side does is right. Yep. 
Um, and you got to be careful with that. That's what causes a lot. Now, of do you guys trip out on how much it affects you, even though you're this self aware about totally. it? Isn't yeah, it yeah. wild? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. I even even I have to literally not look at it. Yeah. I, I, otherwise, it affects. I was me. doing so well the last few weeks. You know, like, we're, yeah, we're, we're going, going into <laughs> going into this year. I'm like, oh my god, I've been away. Uh, I, everything is so much better. You know, like my mood, like everything. Like I'm just like less stressed. I'm, I was carrying a lot of nonsense from you know events that I can't control with me. I'm like, why? That's so. It's not benefiting me. I mm-hmm. always, I feel like I like I feel like now anywhere I go, like somebody is looking at me and trying to fit me in a category to fit in a, in into like one of these sides. Oh. Oh, yeah. I can't help but think that is this is this funny the other <laughs> night. So this just happened two nights ago. <clears throat> I'm walking the dogs uh, late at night. It's like 10 o'clock at night. And, uh, you know, and again, these, 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 it's really late. I'm going through my complex and uh, walking the boys and I, in these like four people and they're all like, you know, they, they, they look like they're with each other, but they're distancing themselves six feet apart and everything. And they're all masked up and everything. And then I don't have a mask on. It's, you know, 10 well, you're o'clock. by yourself. Yeah. I'm by myself. It's 10 o'clock and I'm walking my dog. It's like, of course I don't. Right. Uh, but then I feel, but the the initial thing is like these, yeah. they're looking at me. You feel judgment. Yeah. I feel yeah. it's so weird. Right? And I, I know, know it's all me. Just start coughing. It's my own shit. Right. So, but listen to this. So this is where this gets weird. Right. So I'm walking and we pass each other and I feel like they're all like staring at me like weird and shit. And, and then I hear the, like this right, like right behind me, like this. <laughs> and I, I like over my shoulder real quick and I snap back and I don't see anything. Keep going. <laughs> looking over my shoulder and what the fuck is and I, and I think it's them or what they're doing <laughs> and about the third time I hear it I turn around and b- by the way none of this had registered yet until this moment right here I don't think that I have polka dot shoes on, plaid sweats, crazy beanie. I smell like weed because I just smoke. <laughs> I just smoke, and I just realized that I, you know, the the dog poop bags. Yeah. I just put a new one in for for Mozzie's thing, and it the thing bopped off. And this whole thing was rolling behind me. I had about fucking fifty yards of fucking poop bag <laughs> dragging behind me. No wonder me. they're yeah. staring. Yes, at yeah, me. they're all staring. I'm like, no wonder they're staring at me like that. <laughs> and I had this butt of like rolling the fucking dog poop bag up. And I'm like, what a moron I am, dude. Like, of course, I look like a clown. I smell like weed, and I'm dragging them fifty yards of freaking poop bags behind me. That's why they're staring at me. They don't give a shit that I don't have a mask on. But yeah. you know, it, I just had that moment of like, wow, this has affected me that I'm in my own head yeah. that much. Oh. Yeah. That I think it has something to do with that when really it's like they probably had every right to look at me like I'm yeah, some weirdo. Yeah, the judgment. That's a real thing, man. Yeah. Like it's everywhere. Like that's I thought, oh, that's what's so frustrating. It just feels that. It just always feels like it's all over you and it's really not. It's all in your head. Well, man. I mean, to take it to something that we understand very well, how many times people are afraid or they're shy to go to a gym? Because they feel like people are going to watch them, and and I'm I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm yeah. out of shape, and I, and we know because we lived in gyms, nobody cares, nobody cares if yeah. you if you come in and work out. In fact, the, the people who are the most consistent will help you if you ask them, and mm-hmm. uh, you know are the most helpful. Nobody nobody's watching you, nobody cares. It's probably like that in the real world. Most people don't give a shit. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. No you know doubt. what I'm saying? The yeah. majority. Yeah, no, it's you know what annoys me about those poop bags. Uh, I <laughs> I'll go on walks in my neighborhood. People do this. They bag up the dog poop and then leave the bag of dog poop on the ground. I don't. Under, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't understand it. Now, is that because they're, is they're, your, they're probably coming back to get it? Is no, I have actually literally because well, I've that, done that's waited. crazy. Yeah, I've done that before, right? So, like when I walk past, so you bag it, leave it, and then wait to. Well, come back. so I have. I I have on my deck. I don't know if you guys ever noticed when you walk on my at my house. You're probably wondering why because I trip out people all the time. So when you walk on my deck, there is a. Uh, you guys ever seen those diaper? You have got to have one. Diaper now. genie. Is that, yeah, right? The one that seals the smell or whatever. So I have one of those on my deck, and then I also have baby wipes. So when people come to my house, they're always like, why the fuck does this guy have a diaper thing? It's for the dogs. So they get their butts wiped. I throw it right there in the trash. I take the. Oh, you wipe your dog's butt? Every single time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, If you watch them, you have to do that too, by the way. That makes sense. Yeah. If you babysit them, it's necessary for you to do that. Okay. Just so you know. If I watch your dog? Yes. That's what I'm (laughs) I'm saying. And people think that's weird, but it's like, I think it's more weird to not wipe a a bulldog's ass and then let him sit on your couch. I think that's disgusting. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So So does he just stand there and let you do it? Yeah. Yeah. No, No, they like it. You know what I'm saying? They're okay. Let's, anyways, let's like rear end up a little. <laughs> anyways, Ooh, why I was daddy. saying that was because I. So sometimes what I do because I have all that, I have that trash, I have that at my, on my deck, and I. So I'll I'll drop the poop bag right by the steps up to my my place, and then when I make my round and uh, I come back, I'll, I'll do that. But. That's weird they do that. Now, what is it because possibly, like, you know, in your complex, you probably have the same thing I have where they have, like, the trash cans that are dedicated for throwing away poop bags? No. 
They don't have that. No, so I go through. Maybe that's what you're. you're that's no, so I'm going through different neighborhoods. I'm not even in the area, my complex. I go on these long walks, and uh, there's these. In the, I'll see the poop bag w- with the poop in it for three days. So I'll uh, go through the same. Because I've that's seen annoying. Dude. Well, I've seen people in my neighborhood do this when the when the trash guys don't make their rounds. So we have like I don't know every. I don't know, a few hundred yards, there's a, one of those things. Or you could throw it in there? Yeah, that's it's literally for your dogs. They keep poop bags on there in mm-hmm. case you don't have any or what like that, and you just toss them in there. And whenever I pass one, and if I'm carrying one, that's where I throw it away. Yeah. But every once in a while, whether it's a holiday or the guys are just being lazy or whatever, or just we have this like plethora of dog shitting that week, I don't know, it fills up that tra- trash can and you can't put any more in there. Then I see stuff like that. Mm. Then I see people leaving it. So maybe I like- think so. Here's a story that I created in my head, right? Because okay. I, I see this and I'm like, why? Yeah. Why bag it then if you're going to leave? You're better off leaving just poop because now you got plastic surrounding. Here's what I think happens mm. I think the dog poops and then someone sees them. And they're like, ha ha ha, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna bag it up, and then the person leaves, and they just leave it. That's what I think is happening. Or, That's my story. or it could be this, because this happens mm. to me. Is like, because there's some people that don't do their pick up their dog shit. Is I see it, and I go like, oh, here, I'll put it in the bag for you, but I ain't picking your shit up. And then it. it just stays there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it defeats the whole thing. No, it doesn't, because if you step on a plastic bag, you're gonna get shit all over yeah, your shit. Yeah, but poop is biodegradable. You know what yeah. I mean? If well, I mean, grass, yeah, if we're talking like, about saving the earth right now. You're yeah, right. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Put it in plastic. Don't want to step on it. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Well, technically, I mean, okay. I mean, this argument is this was this is. It took me a long time, by the way, to get used to this. I grew up in the country. Yeah, where, dog shits. They shit. Yeah, they, they shit. shit. It's yes. fertilizer. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's you know, good. like you buy a fertilizer for. By I know. The way. You don't I know. Pick up after so birds. I grew up. I grew up this way like that. So it was a transition for me when I became a city boy. That like people looked at me and got really pissed when I didn't pick up my dog shit. I'm like, he shit on the grass. It's the grass going to be greener next week. <laughs> Fuck yeah. off. You know, like people don't like that. You can't do that. You know. So <laughs> I had to shift that the way of thinking. But I agree with you. Like no, instead we leave plastic bags now all over the place. Yeah. That can't be good for the environment. No, no. it can't. <laughs> no. First question is from Melissa Folks PT. Why is there such a discrepancy between trainers on the proper form and mechanics of exercises? Is there a lot of discrepancy on form? Well, okay. So I think there's debates on certain exercises, I would say. Yeah, well, okay, so I'll use myself as an example. If you watch me train, let's say you work out at a gym that I'm training clients and you see me train five different people, you might see five different variations of form of the same exercise well especially like the squat be, mainly because people move differently and yeah. i modify them and change them. so that might be one of the reasons why the other thing i can think of is i you know like any profession some trainers are really good and some trainers just they just know how to make you sweat and so they don't really pay attention to form for them it's all about getting the client sore, getting them to sweat and burn calories. And to them, the exercises are just a means to that end. So, I, you know, most of my career, I, I train trainers, right? So this was uh, very common for me is exactly what you just said, Sal, is mm. uh, some of them are are just terrible at getting clients to to do the exercise correctly. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll teach it. They'll show it. Like, here is how you do a shoulder press. And they give up after. And then after that, it's yeah. just they let them do it. Mm-hmm. And it and it doesn't matter that the and 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 part of that is uh, laziness. Part of that is just being uh, naive, not knowing how to communicate and cue the client. Right, mm-hmm. like so. There's definitely an experience piece that comes here. Like um, even myself, like if someone did like a really bad overhead press. Uh, it took me years of understanding why they had a bad, like the the lack of shoulder mobility, the inability to control their their core stability and tuck their tailbone. I I didn't know that stuff as a trainer the first few years of my life, so mm-hmm. I wouldn't know how to cue it really well because you first have to understand what what bad form looks like. Then two, you got to know what uh, good form looks like, and then three, you have to be able to cue it for someone to get there. It takes a pretty good trainer to be able to do that. Yeah, I wish she provided some examples of like exercises that that they saw, like like the discrepancies, because there's also other camps that like teach uh, different techniques. Is for example, like a kettlebell swing. True. Uh, you know, there's like a couple different camps. There's there's different styles of it, and there's also uh, you know ways where people like will swing and go all the way up over their head, like the CrossFit style. So you you know you'll see that like a, a whole host of different people like doing uh, the same exercise in a completely different way. Well, okay, I forget who said this, or like how, I'm, I'm going to probably butcher it, but I mean, any any movement that's done uh, with you know control and good technique can be an exercise. It's valid. Yeah. 
If it's done, if it's performed if safely, the person can do it properly. Yeah, if you can do, if you can perform it safely and controlled, I mean, any movement can be considered an exercise. Well, but, and to that point too, I think that like with the certifications, we've been limited with our ranges of motion, and so you'll see a lot of like trainers still coaching to like only 90 degrees or, or, you know, only going in front and never behind your back and, you know, and all those things. So now that case on that, I think we can speak better to because that I was guilty. Yeah. Of. Cause different certifications sometimes. Oh yeah. I, I mean, if you looked yeah. at if most of the front half of the certifications that I had learned, it was a matter of fact, I believe it was, I want to say it was Nesta was the first certification that I remember hearing this. And I remember first it was my trainers. They went and took it first and I had to take it because I couldn't believe this. But up until that point, I actually thought it was uh, like a huge workout sin to break 90 degrees on a squat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if, and, and they were the first certification that I ever took or any of my trainers took that I was aware of that was promoting ass to grass. And the whole idea that as a, it's, it's very natural for you to be in that position, that we should be squatting down to that position. And I remember when my trainers came back to me after they took the certification before I did, and they were telling me this and we were like debating. I'm like, no, that is dangerous and unsafe and blah, 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 blah. And like, I remember fighting saying, and I was in the camp of 90 degrees. Same thing goes for the behind the neck pressing, right? Mm -hmm. That was just, yeah. I mean, I used to actually look for people in the gym that were training that way. And then I would school them on why they shouldn't yeah. and why it's dangerous. And then I would coach them on, you know, pressing in front of them. So uh, I definitely can see where that there's definitely discrepancies in movements like that. Um, that I just was unaware of why certifications were teaching us that, you know, and, and same thing with a shoulder pressing down to 90 degrees only and not going all the way down to your chest or whatever, or all the way to the back behind the neck. Uh, movements like this, um, they, and I didn't know that certifications did this because they are in the, they're in the business of not getting sued. And if they teach all these trainers to tell all their clients, go ass to grass, knowing well that 90% of the population don't have the mobility and the range of motion to yeah, do that. Yeah, because then they have to teach the trainer how to get them to that point. Which what is a whole other level Absolutely. of education. Yeah, and on the other yeah. end of that, yeah, any exercise done with poor control, poor stability uh, is dangerous. That's right. So, And it, it could be a curl. It could be as simple as a curl. But if you don't have the control, the stability, the strength, and the ability to perform it uh, with good form, then it becomes dangerous. So this is true for all exercises. Mm -hmm. So if you can do a movement, and I, I, you know, I learned this from uh, gymnasts that worked for me as trainers, is they would do things that I would never, I would always think were super dangerous, mm -hmm. but they had great control and mobility, good stability, healthy shoulders and joints. And it's, well, I, I mean, their bodies are capable of doing this and they can do it with good control and stability. Therefore, it's no longer, it's not a dangerous movement for them. And by the way, I mean, this is also the motivation behind starting Mind Pump TV on YouTube. I mean, you've got over 500 exercises on there now. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for uh, good information related to mechanics of exercise, um, either ourselves are on there teaching or we've sought out other professionals in the space that we think are providing really good, valuable mm -hmm. information regarding that. Uh, there's tons there, so go there. Next question is from Cool Hand Moran. Can you please go over the pullover movement? There are so many angles to hit it from, resistance curves, and muscles involved depending on how you attack it. The pullover has to be one of the more underrated upper body exercises, even today, uh, that's out there. Now, we include pullovers in most MAPS programs because mm -hmm. We know this. Uh, I think it's a phenomenal exercise, and there's very few movements that work that motion, that overhead to the front kind of motion. By the way, that's a natural uh, human movement. Humans do a few things very well um, naturally. One of them is to throw with accuracy. We do that better than any other animal. So that overhead to the front you know, kind of motion is something that we should be able to perform, and a pullover is a loaded form of that. In fact, back in the day, uh, pullovers were considered a staple strength I exercise. I just say, wouldn't people like tout how much they can actually yeah, do? 300 yeah, 300-pound you know, barbell pullovers yeah. or whatever was a big thing. The muscles involved with the pullover are the, the, the lats um, and the chest. So you're actually going to work both the lats. So it's one of the few exercises that works both the lats and the chest. In my opinion, it's more of a lat exercise than yes. a chest exercise. Mm -hmm. Um, triceps are stabilizing. It's good for shoulder mobility, develops a nice rib cage. You get good uh, serratus development. Those are the finger-like muscles under the armpits when you get real lean. Your that, gills. The gills, uh, right? Yeah. So that's all good stuff. You can perform it with a dumbbell or a barbell across a bench, on a bench. You can do it with cables. My favorite versions of pullovers are typically with a dumbbell because a barbell requires more 
skill to perform. You have to be able to lock your arm into position to perform the, the pullover with the barbell more so than with the dumbbell. And you can do it on a bench. If you do it on a bench, you're not going to get as much of a rib cage stretch. If you do it across a bench where your upper back is on the bench, your feet are down in front of you, and you drop your hips as you go back, you're going to get this big stretch um, in the rib cage. I love uh, the machine for this too. Oh, the, every once in a while, my favorite can, machine. Oh, when you can find it in a gym, it's like it's for sure thrown in my routine. The Nautilus one, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One I, of my favorites. I love, I love pullovers. No, I think it's, a, I think it's one of the more under, uh, underrated movements that's out there for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to attack, you know, the lats with with something like that, you know, like and to get it from that angle. And I think it's such a functional strength movement to incorporate. As yeah, well. and if you want to isolate the lats, really the only way to isolate it with a cable is my my favorite ways to do it. So like a a rope, straight arm uh, pull down, uh, which is like a pullover, and you get that lat squeeze. If you have trouble connecting to your lats, which a lot of people do, try starting your workout with that, and then go to your pull downs and your rows, and you should be able to feel like you're connecting more uh, to the lats. You should be able to feel a pump there. Next question is from Caleb Wheat. Can you go into the benefits of squatting barefoot? Is it better to go barefoot or just wear shoes like Converse? You know, this reminds me of, uh, I don't remember how many years ago it was. It might have been 10 years ago. That guy wrote that book on running, on barefoot running. Mm -hmm. He went, I don't remember the, na the name of the author, but he went and studied, uh, you know, uh, modern hunter-gatherers and tribes of people where they ran a lot. And he studied the mechanics of their running. And all of them ran barefoot. And what he noticed was- Born to run? Is I, that what it's called? That might be it. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Um, what he noticed was when people ran barefoot or those people ran barefoot, they, they hit the ground with the forefoot first and then down on the heel. So like the foot and the ankle acted like a shock absorber. And so he wrote this book and said, running barefoot, superior to running uh, with shoes on. Because when you run with shoes, you hit with your heel first and mm. the shoe is trying to you know, cover the impact. It's not nearly as, as good and this and that. And that's why we have back problems, knee problems from running. Well, here's what ended up happening. Shit ton of people took their shoes off. Got injured. Everybody got injured. Yeah. And that's because nobody had the strength, the mobility, the stability to do it, right? Yeah. So the reason why I'm saying this is squatting barefoot is the best if you can squat barefoot. Yeah. Most people can't. Most people, you take their shoes off and you have them go squat barefoot, they're going to get ankles are going to cave, their knees are going to do weird things, they're going to feel pain in their SI joint. So don't just jump into Yeah, you have to build up the strength, support, and stability uh, to be able to pull that off. And that's going to take some time and definitely a lot of frequency and repetitions. And so, yeah, you don't want to just like all of a sudden take your shoes off because you read something like that, that it's, it's superior. Uh, you know, you have to work your way there just like anything else, any kind of a new uh, exercise that you're about to perform. Now, do you guys remember seeing like what are the most limiting factors from keeping somebody from doing that? Like what's to stop somebody that says, okay, I've never trained barefoot foot i'm going to start why why shouldn't i or why should i or can i like what are the prerequisites for somebody to you have be to have really good ankle mobility and good foot strength yeah. i mean those are the two big things right yeah. the reason why people typically don't do is they're afraid of dropping a weight on their foot though to be honest and that's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's it at is. least the main concern yeah. yeah that's usually why gyms don't allow it so nobody does it but you know you work out at home or in your garage you can totally do it here's how i would start like it would hurt any less if you had a shoe on dropping the weight i uh, know here's where here's <laughs> here's where i would start I would start by doing upper body exercises barefoot and just con connecting to the floor with your feet as you do your well, standing shoulder press or your curls. So, so. You're, you're going in the direction where I, and what I was alluding to and asking is like, I, I couldn't barefoot squat for a while, like, but I, what I started doing was like barefoot walks. Mm. Like if you don't, have you ever taken a walk for a half mile barefoot? Like mm -hmm. not many people do. Not many people go walking for a half a mile or a mile barefoot start with that before you go load 100 200 pounds on your back and ask your your weak ass feet to be able to grip the floor stay stable mm -hmm. and have good mobility and strength through that movement why don't you just start by doing these walks and so i would begin first just with taking my shoes off all the time walking out on the on the concrete walking out on the grass and the dirt just getting my feet conditioned then i started playing around and just body weight Doing things like tippy toe squats, working on my yeah. you know my combat stretch, which is my ankle mobility, and then as that started to progress and get better and better, then I started going okay. And then by the way, I'm now I'm loading the the squat. I'm putting like 135 pounds, which is very light for me, and I'm working on range of motion and depth, and then paying attention to I'm more than I'm worried about the weight on my back. That's why I'm choosing a weight like 135. That's very easy for me to move. I'm really thinking about my feet. 
I'm squatting down and I've already got the squat down well enough and I'm moving light enough weight that that's pretty easy that I can put a lot of my energy and focus on how my feet are gripping the floor. Well, whether or not you, you want to make this like a regular practice, I think it's important that people consider it because you, you, you know, having that kind of feedback and knowing where your pressure points are with your feet and where, uh, you know, you're, you're accessing your stability, uh, uh, I think is, is super valuable. Cause then too, like it's, it's things that you can start walking and noticing that, Oh, I, I'm going to start, you know, raising my heel up. I'm not even walking like on my forefoot. I'm totally flat footed or, or, you know, I'm pronating or all these things, the, this feedback that you, you you just, it just gets masked when you're wearing shoes all the time. Yep, good point. Next question is from Marie in Motion. As someone who is interested in being a personal trainer, what core disciplines should be established in oneself first before they can really train others successfully? Mm, core disciplines that they should have themselves. Well, I think the obvious one is it's probably a good idea to have been pretty consistent with fitness and good nutrition with yourself. Now, this may not be absolutely necessary, but I think it's very hard to train people to teach them and to relate to them if you yourself are not kind of doing it yourself. Now, I don't mean you need to look ripped. That's not what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say. But if you're trying to communicate to someone about consistency and exercise and here's the things you need to do with nutrition, there's a lot of stuff that you can learn in books, but there's sometimes you have to kind of experience it yourself before you can communicate it really effectively to somebody. So I would say, I mean, that, that sounds obvious, but I would say that's probably the most It's interesting. This reminds me of a post I just saw from Max Schmarzo. He, he put out there that like... Elon Musk uh, basically had built a, a rocket without oh, uh, saw, being, yeah, yeah a, you know, a rocket engineer, um, or have never done it before, basically. But I, I, I feel that like you know, if you're competent and you're you're really passionate about fitness and you want to, you know, learn, I, it, I, I honestly, I don't see how you can do it without practicing on yourself first and being able to get through all of that uh, to then translate and relay that to somebody else. I just that would be a really hard thing to overcome, uh, you know, just to be able to have that kind of dialogue with somebody. Well, it's like the exercise piece, right? Like to, to cue somebody like it's, you don't learn the cues until you've kind of done it yourself and seen enough bodies like that. I feel the same thing goes for like nutrition and, or being able to build muscle on your body or burn body fat. Like to your point, Sal, you don't need to be 5% body fat. You don't need to be the most ripped guy or girl in the gym but you should have been able to take the science that you've learned from either your certifications or schooling and have applied it to yourself to have shown change, whether that is adding five to 10 pounds of muscle to your frame or reducing 10 to 15 pounds of body fat. Both of those require discipline, consistency, and knowledge with the science to apply to your own body. And you, I think, first need to be able to do that to be able to communicate it effectively to somebody else. True, because you know one of the big uh, you know factors in being a good trainer is uh, being able to relate uh, mm -hmm. to the client and, and to connect to them. Um, and it's hard to relate to someone uh, unless you've kind of experienced some of what they're about to go through or some of the challenges that they may have with you know trying to change the nutrition and exercise. Um, by the way, again, uh, I'll give you an example of what I mean by you don't have to be ripped. I had this one trainer that worked for me once who had lost 50 pounds. Was it was a client, actually. He was a client, not of mine, of, an, of a trainer that worked for me. Lost 50 pounds, kept working out for about a year, and then decided to become a trainer. Now, he was by no means the most fit-looking person in the gym or trainer. Mm -hmm. He looked like an everyday, like a regular guy that, that worked out. Nothing spectacular. But – because he could relate to the people, because he had just gone through the journey himself, he'd lost 50 pounds. He would, did such a good job communicating to people. He did such a good job with his clients, and his clients absolutely loved yeah, him. Because so. he went through it personally. Absolutely. But that's the thing. Like I, I think you can understand, uh, like, and you could read books, and you can, you know, go through the education and everything. But until you actually apply it yourself, like you're not going to be able to have that kind of connection, like you could if you, you know, apply it to yourself. Totally. The other one is the, a little bit of self awareness. Um, I think uh, on the other end of the scale, if you're a trainer, you're probably somewhat of a fitness. Fan fanatic. So there's a little bit of self-awareness that might be necessary to realize that you are a fitness fanatic and the people you're working with <laughs> right, are not. Right. True. You know, so when you're talking to someone about coming to the gym four days a week and they're telling you 
that's too much time for them. And you're thinking like, oh, you just got to make the time. I may, and I work out five, seven days a week. And yeah. Like a little bit of self-awareness, like, okay, uh, this person is not fanatical about fitness like I am. So it's going to be different for them. The mm-hmm. other thing is that comes to mind for me too is, and it, I feel like it seems obvious, but I remember having to communicate this to my staff all the time is that when you come across something that you don't know or you don't understand or you've never seen before, or you're challenged by like, immediately go home and research that mm-hmm. and and it's crazy because t- today compared to what it was like for me 20 years ago was totally different like to go search seek out the knowledge and information that i may need to uh help this client that i'm that i just got that is hitting me with a question i'm like oh my god mm-hmm. i've never heard that before or i've never dealt with that issue let me go home and figure it out like I think that's just part of it too, is just if you're constantly seeking out new information and knowledge, I think that's a great discipline. You should be, cons- if you love and you're passionate about this, then a lot of what you should be reading should be related to the type of people that you're probably going to be helping. Totally. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find us on social media, uh, Instagram. That's the place we're at most. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. Me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug the producer at Mind Pump Doug. Here's the part that gets on my nerves, really annoys the hell out of me, is when they twist it and they sell it as this is self-love, okay? This is me loving uh, myself. It's not. It is not loving yourself. Loving yourself means you have a sense of discipline and you also check some of your indulgence.